when a chest mass has been identified in ultrasound that falls into the category of the congenital pulmonary airway malformations, we look very closely on the ultrasound for any other anomalies that may be present. For most of these kids, this is an isolated finding and not related to any other problems with the baby. For kids who do have a CPAM, or the congenital pulmonary airway malformation, we follow them very closely once it's been identified. We know that the size of this lesion or this mass correlates with the risk of the baby developing heart failure or high drops, which is extra fluid and extra spaces in the body, extra fluid around the heart, extra fluid around the lungs, extra fluid in the belly or in the skin. So we can follow babies closely to see if there's any signs of high drops or heart failure with the ultrasound. Traditionally, patients can be categorized as being at a high risk for high drops or a low risk for high drops based on the size of the mass or what we call the CVR, which is a relationship of the size of the mass to the actual head circumference of the baby, a way to kind of indicate how large this mass is relative to the or proportionally to the rest of the baby. For kids who have a relatively low risk of high drops, we do continue to follow them every two weeks, spacing out the intervals as the kid gets farther along in gestation. Most of these masses may continue to grow up until 28 to 32 weeks, so this close surveillance needs to continue throughout most of the pregnancy. For kids who have a very large size mass and are at an increased risk of high drops, we actually will follow them weekly. And there are some kids where the size of the mass puts them at such high risk of high drops, or we may even see early signs of high drops that we can consider therapy or treatment that has been shown to reverse the process.